What are the differences between co-ops and condos in the Manhattan real estate market? Well, I can tell you that those key differences are extremely important to understand if you're going to buy in New York City. I'm Dewey Moss. I'm your New York City real estate resource. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button, and let's get started. Many people come to the New York City real estate market really not wanting to buy co-ops because they've heard a lot of horror stories around the co-op buying process, which is understandable. But here's the first thing that you need to understand about co-ops versus condos in New York City, and that is that the inventory favors co-ops. In fact, about 85% of the entire inventory in New York City are co-ops. That leaves about 15%, give or take, with a few townhouses thrown in, for condos. And those condos are in various areas in New York City and tend to be lumped together. So, for example, you may want to live in a particular neighborhood in New York City and have your heart set on living there, and there simply may not be any condos to look at. With the inventory being 85% co-ops, I can tell you that co-ops are bought and sold every day in the city. So if it were truly that horrific of a process, it wouldn't be happening all the time. One of the major differences in co-ops versus condos is what you are buying. With condos, you are buying real property. You're actually buying the unit within the building. It's much like buying a house out in the suburbs. You're buying that real property. With co-ops, you're buying shares in the shareholder owned company that owns the building and whatever shares you own are assigned to a proprietary lease that allows you to live in that unit. You do not own the actual unit within a co-op. You own the shares that are part of the shareholder company. Contrary to what many people have heard, both condos and co-ops do have boards that help run the business of the building, but their functions are very different. You can think about a board of a condo being a, a bit more like a homeowners association out in the suburbs. They do help run the building's finances. They make sure that the building is in good shape. They run the overall staff of the building and make those kinds of decisions. However, they do not really control the sale of a unit because again as we established that is real property a real property owner can basically do whatever they'd like to for example you can buy a condo and tomorrow use it as an investment unit no problem because it is a real property so you could rent it out for as long as you'd like with co-ops you think about that as being more like the board of a shareholder company because it is and as shareholders of a company they can make many more rules that they think are going to help the building run itself well. For example, going back to that, that rental rule, some co-ops, in fact many co-ops, won't even allow sublets because they want to keep a very good solid control over the shareholders that are living there and form a nice community. The board of a co-op can control the sale of a unit. For example, if they think that a unit is underpriced and it's going to bring down the values of the building, they can control those kinds of things and they can control what shareholders come into the building. Primarily, they're looking to make sure that new shareholders coming into the building are going to be responsible physically sound shareholders and not bring the rest of the company down. So there are boards for both, but their functions are extremely different. You also need to consider the differences between a condo and a co-op and the finances that are required to put down and what your overall financial profile must look like. For condos, the general rule is that you need 10% down and you need to be able to prove that you're going to have those funds and financing to be able to purchase the unit. However, with co-ops, again, being a shareholder owned company, there are many more rules and the co-op board determines how much money Money they want you to put down to be able to purchase. In general, it's usually about 20%. It's rarely less, but sometimes in very competitive areas of New York City, it's more. It can be 25%, it can be 30%. I've even seen up to 40 and 50% depending on what 
what the board requires for incoming shareholders. In addition, your financial profile for co-ops are very important because the co-op board may look at things like your debt to income ratio and want it to be in a certain percentage. They may look at your reserves, your post-close reserves, how much money you're going to have left over after post-close and may put a limitation on that. For example, they may want to see two years worth of your maintenance payment and your mortgage payment sitting in the bank at the time of closing just to make sure that you're liquid and that you're going to be a good physically responsible shareholder. So two very different purchases when it comes to your finances and financial profile between condos and co-ops. One common misconception is that people think that they can just buy a condo without any kind of application process, whereas they've, they've heard that most likely you have a very long application process when it comes to a co-op. That is not true. You will always have what we call a board application for both a condo and a co-op. But like every other difference we're discussing, they are quite a different process. Both applications are fairly extensive and can be very extensive. They're going to include things like recommendation letters, your financial profiles, bank statements, almost everything that you would supply a bank for a mortgage, you're going to have to supply for these board applications for both a condo and a co-op as well. However, the process with a co-op is a little bit more extensive. They're probably going to require a little bit more information and you will be going through a review from the board and you will have a board interview assuming they like what they see on the application. The purpose of this board interview is not necessarily to welcome you to the community. It is to really understand if you're going to be a physically, financially secure and responsible responsible shareholder and neighbor to come into this shareholder organization. With a condo, they review the application and issue what's called a waiver of first refusal, which simply means that the condo does not want to buy the unit that you are buying. And most condos have no desire to do that. It's real property and they usually let the deal go through. In rare cases, and it is more rare than not, a co-op board will turn down an application. And that can be for many reasons, and unfortunately a co-op board does not have to tell what that reason is. But if you've worked hard to make sure that your application is good, meets the board's financial requirements up front, and you're honest, then most of the time board applications and board interviews go through without a hitch. For both condos and co-ops, we do have a fairly lengthy buying process here in the city. So if you're coming in and you're expecting to buy something and close in just a couple of weeks, that's never going to happen. However, the time frame can be shorter if you're paying cash versus financing. And the reason for that is because both the applications on condos and co-ops generally require that the financing be settled and done. In other words, you have your fully approved letter, not a pre-approval letter, a fully approved mortgage letter ready to go showing that you are ready to buy and that you're approved by a bank before the applications are submitted. But because the process of review and the interview only sits on the co-op side, for condos in general we say about two months from the accepted offer and for co-ops we can say that it'll generally take about three months, maybe up to four months before you get to closing. Now I'm sure you're saying all this sounds very complicated and you know what? It is complicated compared to other markets. There is a lot to consider. You need to start off with a really good strong strategy, understanding what your financial profile looks like, what your buying criteria is if you're a parent buying for a child, if you're looking for a pied a terre, if you're wanting to rent in the future and have an investment unit. You need to decide all of those things and be very, very clear and work with an expert agent who understands all of this because having someone on your side as a buyer's agent will prove immensely valuable because
because they can help guide you through all of this and make sure that the units that you are considering are going to meet your criteria and that you as a buyer are going to meet the seller and the building's criteria so that there aren't the horror stories that some people have heard about trying to buy a co-op in New York City and the difficulties that, that come along with that. It is often because people did not pay attention to all of these different criteria and did not use a good, strong buyer's agent to help navigate that process for you. So there are a few of the key differences between condos and co-ops and the buying process in New York City. It can be complicated, it can be a little bit daunting, but it is not impossible. Condos and co-ops are bought every day in this city. So it is doable, but understand what you're doing in the market and get some expert help. Again, I'm Dewey Moss. I'm your New York City real estate resource. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. Check out the box below for all different ways to get in touch with me. I would love to help you find your New York City dream home, and I'll see you next time.